Thursday, August 6th, 2020, episode number two of the Factorio podcast. Uh, my name is Blake, and this is Paul. Hello, Paul. <laughs> good morning, Blake. Good afternoon, Blake. Good evening, Blake. How are you doing? Uh, good. And I uh, I left my water in the other room. We are we are merely one week away from the launch of Factorio. Can you, can you even believe that? Uh, I mean, for veterans like us who have been playing for five, six years now, it may be a little anticlimactic. <laughs> but the what's what's going to, what I what I predict is going to happen in uh, oh shoot it's like a week away right we have one more FFF pre launch it's tomorrow that's it so that'll be August seventh and then a week from that eight days from now it will be at one right that's the fact that's the Friday it'll be the launch it'll be the the final launch the final Friday fifteen facts whatever yep and that'll be it and then mm -hmm. uh, so so what I what I am predicting for that day is one. Lots of hype on Steam, right? Um, it, Steam is is how they sell ninety percent of their copies. Mm -hmm. I expect ninety percent of their copies or higher will will also will furthermore be sold on Steam. It might be ninety eight percent. Very few people will go to Factorio dot com and get the DRM free version or or whatever the the direct version. Um, and the second thing that I, I predict: uh, uh, lots of hype on Steam. Uh, lots of new players coming in. Um, which I would I would uh, I would hope for um, for this uh, this really great game, and then I, I think there are a couple of things that they said they were saving for us for launch day. Yeah, right. Number like, one, the like it's going to go one. on sale. It's going to go on sale, right? <laughs> it's not. It's never going to go on sale. Uh, 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 All right, what's no, the big I, one? Uh, the nuke, right? Oh, the nuke. That's right. Remember? Yeah, the new a nuke. couple of couple of FFFs ago, they said that the nuclear explosion graphic is one of the high-res graphics to get redesigned. And, mm -hmm. and Pusilla and uh, V45 went through a lot of, uh, a lot of um, uh, detail that showed what we were going to get and what we were, what we were not um, and how it's going to look. And let's see, um, yeah. last time, uh, in addition to the nuke, that was FFF357, the in addition to that, the um, uh, 358 was um, polluted water, um, which I have I have a bunch of questions about. Uh, I did a little video on that one talking about the polluted water uh, coming. And oh, there you go. Yeah, scroll all the way down, you'll see the nuke. And uh, and then I, I have also lots of questions about the polluted water uh, video or polluted water thing. It, and my biggest question is, does the polluted water recede when Ooh. pollution cleans up? Right? Uh, the same Ooh. way the pollution cloud recedes when you clean up your pollution, right? So switching from coal and solid fuel back to, uh, uh, to solar or a cleaner nu a burning nuclear fuel, right? Does... Uh, do we get to, uh, or we put in a bunch of efficiency modules everywhere? Do we get to see nature clean itself up? Mm -hmm. Right. So, I know Will there trees, be a new achievement. I don't think. Oh, uh, that's a yeah. change I that one hundred percent run. You uh -huh. know, you gotta pollute X amount of water. Yep. Yeah. Pollu yes. Yeah. That would be an that would be an interesting achievement. Uh, pollute one thousand tiles of water. Right. <laughs> uh, that would be an interesting one. Um, but I, I don't, uh, and then, uh, some things for after that they have not spoiled yet is the, is the all important, um, probably the most common high res graphic, uh, apart from the inserter is the assembly machine. So they did say that the assembly machine high res and the makeover is coming post, uh, post 1.0. Did we ever get a character, a high res character or are we I, still a low res? That is a great character. question. I don't know if yeah, we did it was if we did it was a long time ago and i do yeah. not remember it i i just think of those couple of pixels of the guy who's just constantly look left look right look yeah straight look doing, left look right thing. look straight guys I gotta have some neck issues by, by you now. know what I, you know what i never look at my character oh no you don't right i mean think about think about the percentage of times you're actually looking at your physical character versus the percentage of the of all the other stuff you're looking at right mm -hmm. uh and and even that it, it's 
the character has been revised, says Chad. Okay, all right. Yeah, so yeah. I guess we did get a little bit uh, a while back. That might have been one of the earlier, early, early ones then. Um, there's been a bunch of uh, also other things on Reddit that said, okay, Spider-Tron. And I'm and I'm going no, <laughs> uh, no, Spider Tron is not coming. You uh, you dreamers, um, you can keep dreaming, but because Spider Tron is not coming. Uh, actually, I happened to be on one night late with our setting, um, and he was streaming and he was doing fixing some bugs in Factorio. He was actually he would open up the the forums, he would read a bug and he would log it and he would go, I'm taking this one and he would go fix it and we watched him fix Factorio source code, right there. Yep, I remember. I got and, it up right now. There's, there it is. I remember watching her setting, playing with it too. Yeah, oh, and he's such and, a cool idea. Yeah, well, he did. He did say that. Uh, now look, um, uh, someone in chat asked him, "Hey, Spidertron, when are we going to get that? Is Spidertron cool? Something, something, something?" He says, "Man, it never really worked right. It was a concept um, uh, thing. We thought about it. Uh, it Works shallow water, deep water, all this other business." And he went through a he went through talked for about for about ten minutes, and he just said, "You know, the implementation of it." Was there's really no place for it in the gameplay, mm -hmm. and he said, just frankly, it never really worked right mm -hmm. uh, with directionally how you want to do it, and it, ne it never really worked. We couldn't really find a a space for it in in the gameplay, nor did it ever work right. So we we started working on it, and then we just ditched it. Yeah. And I I believe him. I I I believe him when he said that. I, I don't think he was blowing smoke because this this was probably two years ago. Yeah, that yeah. I happen to call sometimes. Catch sometimes this, you right? you gotta cut your losses on things, and and especially in software development, as you probably know, you're in you're in the you're, you're yep. in the management space, you know, managing budgets and so on and so forth. Sometimes you just you don't double down, and you just say, look, this is this was a creative idea. It had great intentions. It's not going to make the cut. And, yep. and uh, Factorio's what, what, got the ability to do that. Yeah. What FFF are you showing right now? Over uh, two eighteen. Two eighteen. Uh, Chad, there Chad it is. found it. 218, we have uh, high res players. Uh, it was an 0.16 uh, feature. Oh. So that's probably why I didn't that's notice. Why we, yeah, that's why we don't remember it because it happened so long ago. Yeah. Back when I was, I mean, I would, I want to say I really didn't pay, start paying real close attention to these until probably 250s, I would say, mm -hmm. um, or 240s. Actually, there was uh, there was one of them that I made the cover of. I think that's when I, I, that, I think that, okay, that honestly, was a thumbnail. Yeah. Uh, actually, that was one. I think I'm two, three, four. Uh, easy to remember. Yeah, uh, I think that, I, that's around when I started paying attention to these. I have not uh, made the cover. Uh, oh. So you are a legend. Um, <laughs> Well, there's been there's been other people who have who've made the cover for community events uh, on those, but yeah, yeah, there he is right the there. Look at that right, guy, I'm right there. He's yeah, got that short one. hair. He doesn't have that COVID cut anymore. Right. Uh, yeah, there it is. We did. Uh, that's been two. Yeah, 2018. Man, we were doing. Oof. We were. I was organizing all those uh, community oh, events. PVP. Is, that was fun. This is but this is the production challenge. This was this is before Biter Battles um, took took shape. And that was a ton of work. I was I was working mm -hmm. so many hours uh, getting these together. I was I was actually at at work at my normal job doing this. Oh, right. don't say that on stream, man. They're gonna come uh, to you. They it, say, "What are you doing? What are you doing at work? What we are you doing talk. over there?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was. Uh, I, there's there are times when I'm I'm here and I'm doing work for my other job too. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's just kind of a blend mm -hmm. of a, a blend of a life, right? So what do you want to talk about today? Uh, today, I, there was a great thing that you put in the list um, that I was I was super uh, super um, uh, interested in. It may be obvious to you; it's probably not obvious to everybody else. But you have a topic in here that is that caught my attention for uh, immediately, and it is uh, the topic is when to buffer. Oh, and buffer and and why? Oh right? man. <clears throat> So, it, obviously, in a speed run, there are times when you need to buffer because yep. you get a build going and you will need stuff later, right? And you never want this to stop ever, right? Yep. You, you, because this is, this is a process that is, um, it's, it's either, it's not going to rip material away from something else. So, you want to pack as many of them as you can because as soon as you unlock some other technology, 
you're going to you're going to use more of them than you than you can produce at that moment mm-hmm. something like that right mm-hmm. so speed runs uh tremendous use tactical of use it. of buffers yes uh, casual play um has tremendous misuse of buffers and i and i right. don't say that because i want i want to to put people down it's it's about understanding them megabits right. has tremendously large useful buffers and mm-hmm. in those circumstances very very big buffers we're talking we're talking tons of material hundreds of thousands of ore uh, yep. create stability i mean so there's all sorts of different aspects of buffering you know when to buffer right. when not to buffer it's all uh it's all very very tactical mm-hmm so, so the first, so I guess the first one is, um, I guess the one that I'm, I'm probably most interested in is why is what, uh, what, give me an example. If you can remember, if you remember it, I mean, it is, it has been at least six years since you've done any speed runs. So you have to, I'm kidding. You, you'll have to go way back in the, in the way back machine a couple months ago. It's only a couple months. What, what, what assemblies did you buffer and why? Red circuits. Mm-hmm. That's, Blue that's circuits. Uh, Why? Steel. 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 Right? Yeah. Why? Two reasons. Uh, they buffer well. Uh, mm-hmm. So those materials are very dense. There's a lot of inputs that go into steel. It's five iron into one steel. Uh, Blue mm-hmm. circuits are, they stack in 200, right? I don't remember. Yep. Stack 200. What, what, no, 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 100. They're 100. 100. So 100. I, I, I've been yep. playing some C block lately. I got to mix it yep. up. They stack in 100, but they contain 20 green circuits each. Something like mm-hmm. that. So you can fit a lot in there. Green circuits, you can buffer those because you can fit a lot in there. Right? Iron plates, not so much because you have so many iron plates, they'll fill a chest in minutes. So why mm-hmm. why red circuits? Primarily because uh, you'll start off and you'll need, let's say, 100 circuits. And you need another 100. Um, and, you're, and you're pushing through blue science. Blue science requires red circuits. Mm-hmm. But when you get to purple science, suddenly uh, you need a lot of red circuits. So you a need lot like more. Right. 500. You know, you need 1,500. You need 3,000. Uh, when you get to yellow science, you're going to need even more red circuits. You're going to need another 6,000 red circuits. And all of that is at the very end of a speed run, right at the very end of a rocket. So if you can produce that for an hour and a half, producing red circuits, and then and then consume them at a rate that is ten times faster than you than you make them. Uh, mm-hmm. You can then you can turn all those red circuits into science in in the last ten minutes. So, but only if rocket, you buffer. Yeah, only yeah, only if you buffer. There's no there's no way to do it otherwise. So I've got all of this. I've got most of this uh, worked out. I'll show you my numbers, or I'll show you my numbers. Uh, but I'll tell I'll tell them to you. So. As an ex- as an example, <clears throat> um, your the steel demand. This is why you want to buffer steel. Your steel demand is around forty six thousand, forty seven thousand steel total. That is all the steel that go and and let's see, that is all the steel that goes into um, purple science. Uh, most of it goes into purple Rocket. science. Like 30, 30,000 30, of it goes into production science. Um, the uh, yellow science, uh, utility science takes some, but uh, is in the LDS, uh, mm-hmm. low density circuits. Uh, the rocket itself, ta- uh, L- LDS for the rocket takes 1,400. And then you also need 6,000 steel for engines in in the blue, in uh, chemical science, right? In, uh, in blue science. Yep. So... You, you, from the moment you start making steel, you need to not stop making steel is, yep. is the lesson here. Because when you get, when you get steel running, um, it's really only one line of steel. And that is, you're kind of racing to, if you're doing default settings, you're doing military because military does take steel and you're also, uh, it, it does. Uh, yeah, yes. The pierce piercing rounds, you're racing for military and you, then you're also going to race and go do engines for, uh, for, for chemical science. Mm-hmm. Um, the, those two are, uh, are kind of initial dump, but then once you get those running, your steel will back up and you do not ever want it to stop. You want yeah. to have chests and chests and chests and, and chests you- because 
you won't if you just stop and just buffer those and then wait and split them off you will not you won't make the top 20 uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> right in speed runs yep because you just need there the curve as soon as you unlock purple science your production science your demand immediately goes i need 30,000 of them right now <laughs> yep. So, that, so that's that's buffering for a speed run. So there's that tactical buffering, right? Where right. I know I know I'm going to need it. So I'm going to mm -hmm. plan ahead of time because I've spent 40 hours planning the speed run, right? And for, yep. I'm going to execute it in two. So they know exactly how much they need. They spreadsheeted it, but most players don't, right? Mm -hmm. So what about buffering for most players? The average player, uh, mm -hmm. casual game, mega base, that kind so of thing. So my so I'll tell you my tactic and you can tell me what, what else I'm, what else I'm missing. So my, my, uh, my justification for buffering things like copper and iron and, or, and, um, I guess plastic from oil mm -hmm. and um, solid fuel is the things do, you know, the things on the ground, do you no know good? So, or on the ground is no good to you. You may as well have or in the form of plate in a chest instead of on the ground, because then you have options, yep. right? I can make it into something. I can, I can do all those. So, so something like, or is not useful to me. I mean, iron other than the concrete stuff. Yeah. You want a little bit of that, but for, for me, I've used, I've used a bunch of time getting some, uh, getting some miners and all this material. I, uh, and I'm going to put a bunch of lines of smelting down, I'm pulling it into plate because ore on the ground does me no good. Plate in Correct. hand does me good. Yep. Right. What, if you can, if you can push it into something else and and store and buffer something else, and you yep. never need the first thing to begin with, uh, right. basic. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. There's no also, no sense in storing iron ore. Also, just about anything else that will go into science, because you're gonna consume it. Right. Mm, let's see that. That's where that's where things oh, are going to okay. start get interesting, right? Uh huh. So uh, let's let's run through a scenario, okay? So you have inserters okay. and you have belts, and you're going to buffer those for green science, right? Okay. And you have uh, and you have uh, uh, you're starting to build blue science, right? So mm -hmm. now, if you if you have a buffer of let's say a thousand inserters, that may eat up iron. That eh, iron it's could, it, that's well, a it's lot, a lot. Though. I know yeah. it's a lot. Let's it's two rows, right? It's two rows right. in a box. It's, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two, two, two. That's, it's half half a chest. Let's even even five hundred. Now that iron could have been used for the blue science. Yep. All right, engines. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit of red circuits. Uh, so by buffering the ingredients for one of the sciences, you may be choking off one of your other sciences the other sciences right and it's it right, is right. so like for example uh inserters you know you said a thousand inserters well that's a lot so people aren't yeah. usually going to have a thousand inserters but what if they had um in a more serious uh science like yellow science what if they decided that they were going to keep a thousand blue circuits and they were just going to be turning out blue circuits and they had a thousand in a buffer so so that's a lot of material but Blue circuits again, though, is is pretty useful. It, uh, it, it's not so. So, for example, um, frames you have fl uh, robot frames. You don't have very many options for, right? Mm -hmm. Either yellow science or you're going to make some bots, right? Yep. That's about it. Blue circuits, uh, the the processing units. You got a ton of options, um, and. <laughs> Uh, not only not only does, does that go directly into science, but it also goes into the heavy module, heavy modules, which needs a ton. Yep. And also your armor and your gear and your equipment. You need you you probably need uh, to get <laughs> your gear up and running for a new player that either joins you or you die or you lose your arm or whatever. You probably need like what 400, 300, 400 to get. Oh yeah, to you get two fifty just for the power. Yeah, two fifty for your for one power. Then you need. Um, I think your exoskeletons don't take it. That's red and uh, and steel. I'm doing this from memory, by the way. Uh, they'll correct me. But don't your Mark II Mark II Robo ports need some blue and a uh, couple other assemblies? I'm, I'm probably mi I'm probably missing. Um, need some blue circuits to get to get everything good for uh, your armor. Certainly does. Uh, needs that and modules. 
So for something like that, um, I would say that blue is is a better uh, choice of buffer than something like frames, even though both of them go into near similar, very similar ratios, one, two, three for your yellow science, mm -hmm. uh, your LDS, your uh, uh, your LDS and your um, your frames and your and your blue circuits in. That's a very close ratio for a slow manufacturer of a, of a yellow science. Mm -hmm. Alternately, so uh, you, but what you said was very interesting about how they store more efficiently. So that's something I didn't think about. If you look at the ratio of, say, yellow science, the the three okay no, engines, one one and one or one 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 and two, those are very mm -hmm. similar, right? One steel, one pipe, and two gears. Is that I get that? I always mix those other two up because I just throw a bunch of it, I throw a bunch in. Of course, it's bad, but uh, that's very similar contrast with something like blue circuits which is lots of green mm -hmm. right very little red and very little um uh very little sulfuric that's a mismatch mm -hmm. so you do need to think about how you can store a full chest of green versus a one row <laughs> right mm -hmm. is it is it one row uh yeah, it, it, uh, one row or two rows of blue circuits, right? It's a ton. You you end up storing a ton of. You, you have a lot less inventory to store if you store blue, right? Yep. Uh, two pipe, yep. one gear. That's right. Uh, I got it. Backwards. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I think uh, let's let's reset uh, our shoes a little bit. Let's place ourselves in in some different shoes. Uh, okay. You you've played Factoria for more hours than we can count up to uh, just, we don't we, we don't want to talk about it but uh, <laughs> it's just part of our life that we want back and we'll never get in but no the, the average person what 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 is the the percentage of people who launch a rocket right how many people even get to power armor most players right most yeah. players are going to have a blue circuit assembler not a row of them right they're going to have one two maybe three and they're going to be really slowly putting out one blue circuit at a time this uh -huh. is this to me is the common case and I, it, it's kind of boring to, to to talk about because because we're not used to it but it is kind of that common case of buffering and when mm -hmm. that player has a chest full of blue circuits that is that is an example where it's detrimental in some cases mm -hmm. uh it's detrimental to buffer so many blue circuits especially if they leave that chest un you know unblocked right. uh, because uh, it's it's one, uh, because one of the reasons uh, for that is what I want to explore next is uh, a lot of times you're balancing resources between two different systems. So you're going to mm -hmm. send half your iron one way, half into another, right? You're going to use a splitter. What when is you the split, what is the achievement called? To oh, yeah, there it is. Smoke me a kipper. Mm -hmm. I'll be back for breakfast on Steam, which is high nineties percentage of people who own it. Sixteen point one percent of people launch a rocket. Hey, 16, that's pretty good. That so, is pretty good. So you got a line of iron, you split it. This is a common uh -huh. scenario. Everyone does this. Yep. On the left side, you're making blue circuits. On the right side, you're making, I don't know, rails. So, you know, normal stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. Or you're making purple signs, you know, one of the two. You're, you're splitting right. up resources. If you buffer on the left side, and you start buffering blue circuits, then the right side of that splitter is only going to get half the material. And then mm -hmm. it's not going to self-balance. If you were right. to not buffer on the left side, it would back up. The belt would get totally full. And then it would move on to the next thing. And this is like prioritizing your resources, mm -hmm. essentially. And yep. you never want to prioritize resources somewhere and then buffer. Oh, Does that make right. sense? Yes, so, yes, yes. So if you're going to make a Y branch and priority left... Even, uh -huh. even if it's not priority left, but if if that is your priority, and you buffer all those materials, you're going to starve right. Mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's, I do. That's I'll, a pitfall. That. That's a danger. Yeah, I'll do that on uh, on occasion. But but what I'll do is I may buffer. Um, but but I, as long as in in my speed runs, I'll know that this iron is a very limited slow case, right? I don't. It doesn't need much iron. So, um, let's see. Um, an example. 
uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Engines is one. It it does need some, but you're right. Engines is a pretty low. Uh, it need, the, there's much more much more iron that goes into the steel for mm -hmm. the uh, blue, for engines than it does the normal just the the normal iron plate. Or a lot of times the mall is the last ditch effort. I want my iron to go off to science first, and then whatever's left, I'll go. I'll take it to the mall to build yep. my stuff. Um, Oh, because I can always come along and handcraft something, right? Mm -hmm. um, so then, so what? Or what I'll do is, or I'll scoop some up off the belt and I'll hand feed it. Oh, and scooping I, off the belt! Oof. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> you know, if that I is, really need it, if I'm if I'm really behind. If yeah. you're scooping off a belt, that's when you know you need a buffer. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's, that's true. A because, classic, classic yeah. example. Right. And and the other one is a lot of a lot of uh, players that do a buffer uh, don't realize, um, by the way, that you can limit a chest and limit your buffer, right? Mm -hmm. um, you click that little X in the bottom and drag that up, and you can you can declare it either a one a one stop chest or a two stop chest or something. So, for example, um, like in the mall, you really only need one or two squares worth of miners. Uh, if you're if you're if you're doing your um, doing your mining, uh, back in the day, mining miners used to be included in chemical science. Yeah, back in my day. <laughs> but but now nowadays you need to limit that chest so that you're only making one or two squares of mining. Right? Oh yeah. miners, right? That's a uh -huh. that's a that's a really great one. That's a great way to screw you screw up real bad and sink a ton of iron into something that you're 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 not going to use for a long time. Right? Yep. Miners is a big that big iron hog that's right? a big one that that and uh, the the nuclear parts is a, is one that you don't want to forget yes there's nothing worse yes. than having uh five thousand uh heat exchangers and it's just yes <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> hey, or, punches you in the gut <laughs> yeah or or uh our our mutual friend shred guy uh in his, <laughs> in his multiplayer server there's there's a famous clip of this he and he and i disagree on substations i think substations are pretty great uh, and he has a, there's a famous clip of him, uh, making fun of me for thinking substations are so great. And then, I mean, no sooner than when he, uh, when he makes this statement about how, how much substations are overused, he then <laughs> I mean, 90 minutes later, he finds a chest in his multiplayer server oh. that someone failed to limit. And it is completely full of substations. And he just like. <laughs> He gets so mad he can't even see straight, and he leave. He just leaves the stream. He, and the stream's still going. The show's still going. He just leaves. <laughs> He's like, I, I hope you're happy, and then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're happy. That's a classic, right there. That's a classic yeah. short guy. Yeah, but that that's an that's an example of if you if you don't limit those chests or or a buffer that'll that'll get you later is look you're you're gonna draw too much off of. I guess that's the danger of buffering. You're going to draw too much off of your main line if you mm -hmm. if you buffer in the wrong place or you buffer mm -hmm. at the wrong time, right? Here's, um, here's, so so what about multi? What about uh, mega bases? Uh, what's uh, what is what are your thoughts on buffering in mega bases and where does that occur? Well, uh, I mean, where does it occur? Everywhere, trains, trains, yeah, belts, number one place, number one place is probably is the train cars, right? Th those boxes right outside of. Uh, Right outside of the assemblers in the mega base, right in yep. the beacon setup. I don't know if you still do that in 0 0.18. I think that was it's no longer best practice. But uh, trains are the big one. Yeah, train unloading. Right. Mm -hmm. Anytime you're loading or unloading a train, you got a buffer. Mm -hmm. you, you absolutely do because you can't you can't go from belt to train. It just doesn't work. Yeah, your your production will look like peaks and valleys and all that. It won't be nice and smooth. Yep, and you'll have a bunch of science waiting on each other all the time. Uh, so you 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 definitely need to have a uh, um, buffers right off the train. So it's train car inserter stack inserter preferably. Oh yeah, Tra uh, Stack inserters dominate versus versus um, stationary entities, mm -hmm. right? So chess and assemblers all stack inserters all day. If you're trying to pull off a belt, then you might consider fast inserters, um, the blue ones. But it is the the normal way is is train wagon inserter chest inserter belt or wherever else it's going or 
maybe it's just uh, to the to the out out some of the train and then the bots take it out of the chest right yep so that's that's your biggest buffer is the, the trains themselves now mm-hmm. every train that you run is also a buffer so if you're running three eight three trains let's just say eight wagons yep. each that's wagon's big. got 40 slots mm-hmm. right so you're looking at 240 slots of buffer per train you got you got four trains running that's yep. uh you know a thousand slots 100 plates in each one uh, it's a hundred thousand iron that's buffered up. You can't operate a mega base without a hundred thousand iron buffer, right? It's just right. not possible because yeah. because you're you're consuming a hundred to maybe three hundred thousand iron plates every minute, right? Yeah. And your buffers, uh, a good buffer. This is my general rule of thumb. A good buffer size linearly scales with your production. Okay, so un- unpack that again. So, All right. what, so an example: a good buffer size is going to be bigger for a bigger factory. And mm-hmm. what you want to do is you want to aim for like if you're unloading your buffers at a certain rate, regardless of the rate, you want to have five minutes worth of material or ten minutes worth of material. Oh, right. right. Uh-huh. Okay, or or twenty minutes worth of material. So if your uh-huh. rate goes up, you need to you need to be able to support that buffer. Okay. So what I was saying is that you want to aim for like amount of time that you can sustain mm-hmm. with this material. Okay. So mega base, hundreds of thousands of plates. You want a lot of trains. Um, mm-hmm. The reasoning for that is because if you look at your productivity graph, you know how it goes up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Mm-hmm. You want to keep that. You want to get that more flat, right? Steady. You want yep. to keep it more steady. And you always want to have resources available, and you don't want to be in a situation where you have to deal with uh, train delays causing problems. It's, that's right. the classic one, right? There's a train intersection that there's a variable there where sometimes it takes a while for trains to get through, sometimes not. So you got to have that. You got to have that buffer in place. Uh, in order to to help that, and the other thing is variable supply and demand. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, so yeah, all yeah, the trains are are probably your number one. Uh, at, at some point, the mega base, uh, s- the mega base stages are, uh, and think about this in in context of buffers. The mega base stages are everything in one base. And then kind of stage one is off base smelting where you just start bringing in iron plate and iron and uh, copper plate and maybe steel. And then your, your next stage is maybe you start, uh, you start bringing in um, or taking this iron out to circuits and then bringing circuits in. And then you start bringing all of the intermediates in. And mm-hmm. then finally the last stage is, all right, my science outpost has seven trains uh, misfire has seven trains that go to it <laughs> and each train is a science and all I'm and all I'm doing is tra- I'm training science because every science is now an outpost right mm-hmm. and then uh, and then you're that's kind of like the final stages of mega base and then you just run around and look at look for your bottlenecks and do all of those all the things Um and even even so much so that probably all of your rocket silos total uh, silos plural are all in one spot, and you have multiple trains bringing in the parts, multiple and then uh, one or two trains bringing the sci- the space science to your science uh, uh, to to your uh, science modules to your lab, and then uh, <laughs> and that's that's kind of end game when you're when you're trucking. When your when your rockets is no longer really part of your base now, right? Yep, it's all fine tuned. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they but that's that's a question I get a lot on uh, uh, regarding mega basing and all of those sorts of things. But uh, is is what? How do I start to mega base? What do I what do I need to outpost first? And the number the first thing <laughs> modules. First thing is <laughs> is first thing uh, is plate is start doing plate and rip up your smelting and do plate. That seems to be the easiest one. Yeah, uh, be- yeah, we because, could do a whole thing on growing the mega right. base. Yeah. But if you think about it, those become your first major buffers, mm-hmm. right? They and do. and that goes to what I said was, 
uh, what I said was, or on the ground does you no good. Plate in a chest or plate in a train, I got options, right? Yep. So you may as well pull that up. Yeah, and then at that point, that's I, can't, I feel like that's when uh, you get those trains running for iron. Your base turns into more of a, I, I essentially have infinite iron plates. There's always trains coming in. Yep. And now you're at you're you're faced with consuming them and, and producing something. And so check this out. This is what buffering can do for you, Ray. If you want to pull up that uh, that link I just sent I just sent in uh, in chat. Uh, that's my little a little Twitter picture. <clears throat> Ooh! Oh, the blemish. <laughs> the buffers <laughs> ran dry. That is that is one hour worth of twelve k. Uh, worth of 12k SPM. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you think about it, how many rockets are going off? Uh, are going off at that time? Just you know, hun- you know, hundreds, right? How do you get mm-hmm. so much? How do you get so much uh, science at a time? Because space science is your biggest batch of everything, right? Space science, uh, it is nothing, nothing, nothing. You've launched a 1, rocket. thousand. Here's a thousand. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Here's another thousand, right? And you have to consume that. So that that is the ultimate buffer when you have that system there. And uh, I was <laughs> I was trying to get the, me a perfect hour worth of steady 12k SPM. Uh, did not happen. I had I had a blemish, so I had that was a nice little tweet that I had. But <laughs> that but to what Drain's point is, this is what what smart buffering can do for you is is that nice and steady that is that is honestly that is really really what you're going for yeah but this one that picture that we just showed was that's a that is so much material that's just tons and tons of material so much power so many modules in every single machine just it that is a mega base cranked up to 11 uh yeah doing just that short of 12 yeah just, just short, short of 12, 12. yeah Yep. Uh, I want to yeah. explore another topic on uh, buffering. So we're going to go a little bit away from Factorio. I think I'm going to tell a little story. Uh, not, it's not a story. It's not really a story. It's just a, story time. Um, story time. Story time. Uh, <laughs> Trader Joe's. I went to. Let's say I'm going to Trader Joe's. Um, uh-huh. I'm going to use a, a real business example of buffering here. Uh, I want to buy almond butter. I love almond butter. How many almond butter jars do they have on the shelf? One, two, three. Five, not many. Probably right? tw- uh, it depends. Probably like eight to ten. If if they're if they're storing up for customers, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So probably yeah. Yeah, if it's if you like a certain brand, it's probably maybe two de- uh, two rows, four or five deep. Yeah. Right? And how, and how many um how many boxes of almond butter do they have in the back? Maybe one. Maybe one, maybe two, depending they, on what day it is, right? So they keep a real tight, uh, real tight um, buffer there. You know, they they don't want to hold on to product, right? And anyone who uh, you know operates business or talks about business knows that uh, shelf space costs money, hmm. material costs money, holding material costs money. And I'm gonna I'm gonna draw the parallel now. You have a storefront, you have space, you you don't have to pay rent, you have blah, 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 blah. You got to build it. You got to build the shelf. Yep. That's your assemblers. That's your belts. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you have a long belt and you got a lot of assemblers, each one of those is buffer. The cost of that buffer is is not the cost of the assemblers, right? So Mm -hmm. if you want to build something in Factorio, this is is the way I, I tend to think about things. If you want to build something in Factory, you, you draw a big, long uh, belt, right? And, and you put assemblers on one side. Mm-hmm. And then that's going to run until that belt backs up. So what is the cost of that build? Uh, this is this comes into play when you're doing speed running, um, when you're trying to build quickly, when you're trying to expand quickly. The mm-hmm. cost of the build, it's the belts, the assemblers, and the material that sits on them. So that's the cost, right? Because you have to have the buffers there on the belt in the machine in order to operate them. Yeah. Uh, so all, yeah, all those, all those costs you have to have uh, not only, not only a full belt, but then you have to have that a full belt 
that makes it all the way down to those machines or yep. ex exactly down to those machines. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you're wasting shel shelf space, right? Yeah, so a classic example of this is uh, level two modules, right? Yeah, you don't use those at all. <laughs> right? You well, they're, they're used I for mean, power armor now. They're, they're used armor. in factorio extended, right? But but I mean, yeah, for, for vanilla, it is a corner case. You should really own, we should really only have five of them on hand mm -hmm. uh, for every multi, every player in your server. That's yep. it. <laughs> that, that's mm -hmm. all. That's the maximum you should ever have, right? Yep. But then you have uh, you have somebody who makes a build, and they're going to make level three modules, and they're belting level two modules. Right. You know, when you do that, now you have a hundred and fifty sitting on that belt. Yeah, on, on the belt, right? And that's that's the cost of a buffer, and that's just something you lose, and that's something that if you think about it, you can you can change your play style to mm -hmm. maybe even reduce that. Right. So that that's also the reason why we d we don't really ever have a belt full of well, I guess we do, but for green circuits we don't really ever have a belt for uh the copper cables. Mm -hmm. Right? Those are mo most of those are insert only, right? Those are uh we we almost never do that. We, uh, some builds I see because because the ratios are 1 to 1, you're almost never going to have have a ton need uh, for green circuits anyway. You're never going to need a um, a monster amount of copper cables, right? Because ratios no. are three to two from copper to iron. It works out really, really nicely for for a direct insert build. So most of, if you go out to um, factorial prints or somewhere, most of them will be will be direct insert, just because having a buffer in between there is really expensive. You don't need. Mm -hmm. And to that end, early I'll, actually, that's a great example because early on uh, we were. We were outposting everything in this mega base. This was this was probably two years ago, and I was so proud of myself. I made a uh, I <laughs> I made a copper cable train, <laughs> and I thought this is it. We're we're gonna use this for everything. We're gonna take this everywhere. And they said uh, no. They said no, bozo. Uh, <laughs> take that take that away. Rip up that train, kill that outpost. <laughs> don't do that. Just take, Oof. make make copper plate. Pull copper plate wherever you want and make the coils on site, right? <laughs> and so I went, uh, yeah. Copper cables are also they're less dense than the plates, which is backwards. So I not only I not only made something that really wasn't needed, didn't need a buffer. I went backwards on on inventory density too. And I was so proud. I said, guys, look, I got a copper cable train. <laughs> and they went, dumb, dumb, rip all that up, go in, uh, go into the bot base and throw those copper cables away so that they'll get consumed uh, by the bots. Uh, and they made, me un they made me undo it all. Um, and so then I said, well, what I've got going on next is an, is an iron stick outpost. And they went, no. Oh, my God. No, oh, God. <laughs> and they said, look. I said, so, okay, so give me something I can I can buffer or, or give me something I can outpost. And they said, all right, go red circuits. I said, okay, all right, I, I got red go. circuits. I can mm -hmm. do that one. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but that that's that's an issue. So so if you try and do a buffer of copper cables that is less energy dense, those things are such a low, uh, a low uh, crafting time, right, in any of them. They, they are almost instant craft. Um, mm -hmm. And... Uh, they the ratios of uh, that you that you need for an assembly is near is either one or two for almost everything right you don't yep. you don't need any uh, you don't need a, a very um, uh, a, a, a giant amount of them right so so what I had yeah and and to that end what I had to do in that case when I ripped up that that train is I had to go put in requester chests to pull in uh, all of the copper cable and usurp. <laughs> the direct insert bot builds that I, that I even had oh, because man. they wouldn't, they wouldn't call them in. So eventually they did get all used, but, uh, at that point I didn't, um, uh, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do any of those. Right. I'd have just purple chested it and put them in the, the yellow chest buffer and that didn't just grows. <laughs> That's just yeah, like I, a void to me. I don't, I, I don't care, man. I like not, not so, worth my time. Oh man. I, I like a clean trash can. Uh, Oh, actually, I, I do. 
I like a clean trash can, which probably is a great is a great topic because I have a we had we got into a really good discussion about how to, how best to maul to do a maul in. Oh, uh, that's a great idea to talk about. Yeah, how best uh, to maul is so what, what kind of buffers you got in your maul, that kind of stuff. Yep, how to maul uh, best that one. Mm-hmm. That one may be. There's a couple of the topics that we have, by the way, on this that we need some pre- we need prep time because we're gonna have to go make some assemblies and show some pictures on on these and put up some links to them because mm-hmm. um, a lot of the stuff we'll talk about is is better shown than uh, than, than than talked about so mm-hmm. um, chat's asking a really good question yeah. about uh, contrasting with uh, the copper cables what about gears mm-hmm. what uh, buffering and belting gears can be good as is the claim are they good uh, Why? uh it's in speed runs yes uh mm-hmm. we do we do uh belt gears uh, or we do buffer yeah. gears yeah um because uh there are assemblies that need a lot of gears very <laughs> quickly also the person the the or the thing that need i think i spilled my hand, tip my hand but the thing that the entity that needs the most gears is you the person uh okay. the the person uh needs a ton of gears for handcrafting so many things um, for steam engines is a really a really big one. Uh, uh, steam engines, miners, miners, uh, assemblers, miners, assemblers, all kinds of things. So uh, the, that's your number. If you draw a Pareto chart of who needs buffered gears the most, player is number one, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, fantastic you, thing to have is a, a chest of two thousand gears available yep. at all times. You will see now. Granted, you will see early, early, early game, pre green circuits. You'll see some uh, some speedrunners will throw down two assemblers, <laughs> one or two assemblers, and make them copper cables, and hand feed those and hand collect them. Mm-hmm. That is be, that that one use case is to get green circuits in your hand faster. Mm-hmm. Once you have green circuits in a chest, those are gone. You don't need those anymore, mm-hmm. right? That and that's a buffer can, that can go on. That that is that's that is a actually a that is actually a buffer, and that costs. The, yes, it does. It does that's cost, a cost. copper it's got a cost. out of your hand, yep. but it is but it is cost that you're gonna have to spend on green circuits. Yeah, and it, what it amounts to is time, because hitting the button, hitting the right click twice to get ten green circuits, um, is. Uh, and you don't have anything built. You don't have copper cables in, 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 in intermediate. It will take a lot longer to build those ten circuits than it would if you had copper cables in hand mm-hmm. and you and you right clicked it with just iron in, uh, mm-hmm. iron in your hand. Yep. They will go way faster. And uh, so that is a that what you're trading at point material cost in in the buffer that you're not using it towards red science, right? Because most uh, early on, you clearly have two things that you spend your copper on. Number one is your red science. And number two is your is your green circuits. Most mm-hmm. of them need to go to green circuits, right? Mm-hmm. So you 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 got to make a quick. You got to make some decisions because your first green circuits are gonna are there gonna be a minute? Because you what you don't have is uh, what you don't have is a bunch of assemblers and a bunch of and red red uh, red yep. science that that's going on, right? So you, uh, early you'll see almost everyone in the top ten will throw down one or two assemblers throw a couple of stacks of copper in there and let those go for copper cables. And then at some point they'll either abandon that once they get green circuits going or they'll, or they'll pick them up and they'll use them for something different. Right. Yep. Yep. Um, but that's, that, the, but that's speed that, runs. That's right? speed that, runs. We're talking about speed runs. Yep. But uh, almost that, that's a, about the only corner case where those, uh, where those copper cables are needed for buffering. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, otherwise, there, there's a couple of them in in red circuits. There's some builds where you put them on the belts, but then they're just feeding right into red circuits. There is that cost of them yeah, running yeah, along yeah. the belt, but that's that's that at that point. But it's a though, one that's to a six marginal cost, right? But that's right? a one to six ratio. You can't necessarily. Mm-hmm. It's it's way harder to put one uh circ one assembly for copper machines in 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 uh in the middle and then have six assemblies around it and have it nicely fit i mean it's possible mm, but y- yeah, you're gonna but it's probably gonna cost you more belts than uh the copper yeah. that you're gonna save right yeah. mm-hmm. one other so, one that chat brought up which is a good one is what we see new players do all the time is they'll unlock 
um, they'll unlock uh, logistics uh, uh, two, and they'll get red belts. <laughs> yeah, and they're going, yay! I can build twice as fast now. Eh, wrong, you can't. Uh, what happens is they end up sinking so much iron into yeah. the gears mm -hmm. and the iron needed to make red belt that the rest of their production goes to trash because as soon as you hook up a, a red belt maker, all of your iron it gets just sucked up into those red belts. And then you end up you end up just just tanking your your science and your production because uh, because your red belts are so demanding of your early iron. Mm -hmm. That is an example of a a buffer that many players do not need. The early upgrade of belts is um, early upgrade of belts is a buffer that is a big mistake uh, to do is to and I get that all, all the time. When I'm speed running, I get the question. But also when I'm mega basing and I'm starting out, they say, "Hey, you're mega basing. You just unlock red belts. Why mm -hmm. don't you upgrade all your belts?" Yep. And I'm going because I want to get technology unlocked. I don't need to. And and I and I'll look I'll look at the base and I might see one belt that's full, right? That needs more uh, more input. And I'll go if I'm gonna upgrade, I'm gonna do that one and that's it. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I don't need to. Everything's full. Everything's running. It's it's full capacity. Um, I'm not store. I don't need to dedicate iron to that at this point. Um, but red belts are a great example of a hidden buffer that many people don't think about. That are that's a. It's just a. It, it ends up not being cost. a buffer. Ends up ends up a sink. Right. Yeah. That cost. Yeah. I'm gonna challenge. I'm gonna challenge. Yeah. Uh, go for it. Uh, it's. I don't think it's. I don't think it's as straightforward as that. I think I want to bring in something I said uh, a couple minutes ago. And I want to explore. Uh, two yellow belts can move the same amount of material as a red belt, yep. right? It's cheaper to run two yellow belts, right? Mm -hmm. Remember what I said, though, 15 minutes ago, that the cost Inventory. of a buffer is yes. the belt and what's on that belt. Plus, plus okay. the inventory plus is Plus what's right. on that belt. Now, yep. a simple example. You want to use processing units. You want a red belt of processing units or two yellow belts of processing units. If that belt backs up, if uh, if that belt has a buffer on it, the cost is much greater Huge. to have the yellow belts than it is the yes. red belt because the yes. red belt removes the buffer. Okay. Right. So right. a standard belt holds eight plates, right? And it right. costs, I think, it's not one and a half, is it? It's uh, it's a gear and a plate that's three for two. Yeah, it's one and a half plates to make a yellow belt. Yep. And I think it's like nine or ten and a half plates to make a red belt. Mm -hmm. But if you count the buffer, it's one and a half is actually, uh, you know, th two yellow belts is three. And you have a buffer plus of it, eight. Yeah, plus it carries yep. eight plate, right? Eight plates. Uh, yep. so, so your actual cost is 11 for two mm -hmm. yellow belts. And your cost yep. for red is 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 going to be whatever I think it's eleven point five for the actual belt itself plus the eight is is nineteen, mm -hmm. so it's not that much more expensive, right? All right. As soon as you go above plates, if you're hauling something that's like blue circuits, you could actually want a red belt if you're exceeding the the throughput of a of a yellow belt. And yeah. in speed runs, this is interesting. I, I don't know if this mm -hmm. is happening right now in the meta, but in speed runs, we have seen red belt usage. Yes. But it's usually what, what happens is they usually put it at the very, very end of the run. It's near the end. Right. And it's to get that last bit of material there just a little bit quicker. Yes. And that and what that is doing is it's having the buffer that's on it. And Correct. it's making half of the material that was on that belt be used and the other half is the remaining buffer. So right. the end of a speed run, they're very tactically removing the buffers everywhere, all the way from the chests, all the way down to the individual belts. Mm -hmm. It's really fascinating to see. Mm -hmm. I, I was I was talking about this today. There's uh, one of our buddies is uh, Narf03. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy is an interesting one to watch. He does some amazing stuff with buffers. Like what he will do uh, in his latest run uh, he he is okay. So, what you'll see in mm, you look at the top ten of speedrunners today, and say any percent, 
uh, you will see very similar builds uh, between Happy Dude and Phoenix and Nephrim. Sim they most of them use the same map. It, they found a killer map, right? Uh, and it and it's really great. You'll, you'll see very very similar a up down type of style, left to right type of style, and the builds are similar. They're not they're not identical. They're they're similar. Mm -hmm. When you watch uh, Narf's, his is backwards. Mm -hmm. He goes right to left. He has the grid on. <laughs> His handcrafting is not handcrafting. He carries around two assemblers and throws those down and starts. And his handcrafting is not right clicking and building up a queue. His handcrafting is throwing stuff in the chest and swapping recipes on both sides of the assemblers on, on a timer. Interesting. It is insane. Also, he has, uh, he was made, he, he, I saw him do this one deal where he started making rocket control units. He was getting close to the two hour mark and he was getting close to world record. And what he did was he had some extra belts in his inventory and he needed, he needed a few more seconds to complete. I think he was, re he was, <laughs> I think he was research, he was, uh, um, he was crafting the rocket, which the silo, which takes a long mm -hmm. time. So what he did was the, he wanted the, the, the output of the RCUs to be cleared. So he started dragging and making a snake out of belt so mm. that he would, instead of putting down a chest, he just snaked a belt around so that the RCUs, uh, the rocket control unit, started putting out onto the belt and clearing their output so they would keep going because he had material ready to go. And so he made this funky little S curve up and down, and it looked like he was just he he was doing something silly, right? But he what he was really doing was making a belt buffer, and yep. then at the very end he plops down his rocket, yep. but beacons it, puts his inserters in, drags his belt on, and then he then he corrects all the buffers so they all crash in, like he rerouted the belt, duck 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 duck, duck <laughs> and they all crashed in. It was really awesome to see. If you so, if you want to see a guy who is super creative with buffers and just with speed running, it has a completely turned speed running on its head, and does something very, very different than everybody else. Go watch Narf Zero Three. I think he's fourth yep. or fifth at the moment in Let's the speed run. Uh, yeah, he's uh, he is a super talented guy. He and he's also different. Uh, oh wow, he's he's at eighth now. Oh man, that's right. We've had some great speed running. In the la in the, in uh, the last week of weeks weeks of July and the early weeks of August, we have had some of the best speed running we have ever had. With uh, Peta is in, Phoenix is in, uh, Anti has come back to any any percent. Nephrims is always is always right there. Happy dude held the held the record for a, for many months uh, before that. Uh, Rain, you still have mm. uh, Narf. You, you were the you took his world record by thirty seconds. Uh, so you That's build. right. I did. Uh huh. I that did. Was, you, he was the target. He was the target when you were doing your speed run. That's right. Because um, he beat Nephrims, and I just, I just ran Nephrims build. That <laughs> yeah. Was fun. Yeah. But but if you if you yeah so if you go back and you watch this Narf build, it is it turns the met we call it the meta, and the meta mm -hmm. is the traditionally accepted uh, order of operations and strategies that sort of thing. Uh, he turns the meta on its head. Uh, super interesting, uh, and I would recommend for beginning speedrunners do not watch Narf. Uh, <laughs> and do not try and do what Narf does. Pick anybody else <laughs> and do what they do. Yeah, but don't watch uh, but, me. My my videos are old. I don't have uh, my that meta is old. Don't watch uh, me. Maybe, maybe. Uh, but yeah, grab any one of these uh, any one of these speedrunners there on the screen and go check them out. Uh, they're they're a little more uh, a little more uh, easier to understand. Uh, Narf's is, is super, uh, super high level, but very different than anybody else around him. So, uh, mm -hmm. su super, a good, good shout out for, uh, for my buddy Narf. He's great. Anyway, that, that was the, that's the most, uh, just speaking of buffers, that was the most creative use of buffers is dragging it around in the middle of a speed run about to set the world record, uh, and have, and wanting the outputs clear. And mm -hmm. I was, I was looking at it going, what? Doing? he's gonna lose it and then i went oh he's uh the buffer yeah yeah so yeah i think buffering was one of the big things that changed the speedrunning meta before my time uh, oh back in sure. 0.15 0.14 mm -hmm. they uh the speedrunning community uh they realized that they could buffer green circuits in the first half hour mm -hmm. 
and use them in the last half hour to make those blue circuits, right? Because you need a ton of blue circuits, and each blue circuit's Tons. 20 green circuits. Yep. Uh, but what they found is that if they just made a small green circuit build in the first 30 minutes, let that mm-hmm. run, we're talking 10 assemblers, they would have a huge number at the end, and, yep. it, and it buffered really well. And that's where we came up with that green circuit build. And I think it was mm-hmm. TUI, uh, T-H-U-E, who mm-hmm. who actually pushed forward with that uh, that green circuit build? But I don't I don't recall, so don't quote me on that one. But that was pretty legendary. And then ever since then, buffers have been um, it's pretty it, instrumental. It, it, inter- yeah, say. integral part of it. Yeah, I would say. Uh, yeah, Tui Tui was actually the first speedrunner I ever watched. Um, I think it was back in either thirteen or fourteen. Uh, it's probably fourteen. Uh, Tui was the first one, and he had a three hour. Yeah, it was three years ago. He had a three-hour build on on if you go back speed running uh, 0.14, he knocked out this three-hour build and I went wow that's that's insane this this guy's awesome and so I started I uh, I I was his was the first one I I actually said okay if I'm gonna uh, I, I'm super interested in this game I'm gonna see how he did it so I started a spreadsheet uh, that was my first Factorio spreadsheet if if you get by the way uh, new players if you get serious about about Factorio. Don't be afraid. Uh, throw it down on a spreadsheet. Start doing the math, and it's uh, doing the math in your head and doing the math on screen will a thousand percent help you mm-hmm. make good decisions in the game too. Even if you're not a speedrunner, uh, I can recommend. I've I've got mega bases with uh, a, I got a couple of mega bases that I did uh, that I did um, uh, spreadsheets for. So, so did you stuff. know? Um... Did you know that despite being one of the vital pieces of a speedrun, buffering is actually detrimental in a speedrun? Yeah. Buffering is, um, in reality, the best case scenario is uh, the fastest player that grows the fastest will be the one with the least amount of buffering. Because sure. a buffered material is a not used material. Right. And you could have reordered things in such a way that you could have uh, used that material for something else to get ahead in a different way. Um, right. This was evidence in like the Steel Axe run, which is only six minutes long, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, what that ended up becoming when it got really tight, really down to the wire, was the sooner you could turn around an iron plate into something that was placed, the faster your time was going to be. Yes. So, yeah. So that one is uh, all hand fed mm-hmm. because an inserter. Is a buffer that's an iron plate. No, no, or nope, two- nope, nope. You got it backwards. You got it backwards. That was it. It wasn't actually hand fed. It was. It was. It was the least amount of hand fed possible because when you hand feed, that's the biggest buffer because you need a hundred plates or whatever to fill a machine. Uh huh. You you want you want one plate to go into one machine and turned into one gear and then turned into one red science right and then go right into the lab if you have well, to wait until you have 50 iron plates to put them in there th- that's a buffer r- right right yes so when well in the current meta then there's a mix because if you look at macross's uh 9 minute and 19 second steel axe run there is there are no inserters used uh, he is all ones, uh, mm. Z buttons, and putting one Zs and two Zs into machines, um, and taking red science out of those machines and one Z two Z, uh, putting them into uh, into the labs. Not in a single assembler made uh, at all. So if you, yeah, you got to turn his down. But he is he is a hundred percent hand fed everything. So to your point, yeah, if you're putting in half stacks or full stacks into those assemblies, then you're you're creating a uh, you're probably doing a a, a buffer. Uh, mm-hmm. You're you're doing too much of a buffer. If you're doing the if you're hitting the Z key, which the, by default you're dropping a a single unit in, then yeah, then that's that's where you want to be. Is you want to be having one or two in every machine. Yep. If you watch, I, I watched this one uh, uh, many times. The only buffer you see in this is right there. Is right is yes. This it's, this buffer right here. Yeah, twenty three. Yeah, it's in his hand, and he what he's making 
and uh, I guess the plate that's stored in uh, in the smelters when they're complete. But he's he's pulling them out like every mm-hmm. eight seconds. He's pulling he's pulling that plate out of the smelters, and then he's putting it right back into the machines with the Z key one 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 one, one at a time and mm-hmm. spreading it out. Yep. Uh, and in fact, if you look closely. He's even doing this so fast, he's dropping stuff on the floor. He's dropping coal and other pieces on the ground that he doesn't need because it's faster, it's better to have every, uh, to have as many of these uh, the resources in the machines as possible and all the machines running at the same time. Yep. That's and the dance. Yeah, and he is completely comfortable with losing stuff on the floor because all his machines are running and hitting times, mm-hmm. right? It's crazy, uh, but this this is a great exercise in very very fast uh, very fast execution and uh, getting it down down to exact bare bones of what you need in nine nine minutes and nineteen seconds. Macross mm-hmm. forty two uh, he set this uh, record a month ago, and I I don't think it's going to be cracked anytime soon. He's super talented speedrunner. He does I think he's got the uh, getting on track like a pro the the locomotive one as well. But th- this is a good example of the only buffer you'll see in in this game at all is the player, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, he's Holy executing so fast. Holy crap! Twenty two. What's that? Yeah, twenty two minutes for the uh, for the yeah for the getting on track like a pro. He's a killer, man. Uh, yeah, I think I yeah. did one. I did an unsubmitted one in around thirty three minutes. I think I didn't. I didn't submit it. I was gonna work and see if I can get a bronze, uh, mm-hmm. but I, I didn't. I didn't ever get back to it. But I got a so, thirty-three minute one recorded. So in this speed run, okay, mm-hmm. the, the the buffer is uh, is a hand. It's hand fed cycle. You yep. can kind of see it. Uh, the buffer is kept to a minimum. We got nine plates. We got forty wire. We got eighteen uh, red beakers. Uh, nine plates. Nine gears. Five beak. You know, five beakers. It's kept mm-hmm. to a minimum. Uh, so in this case, what I would say is to be mindful that the buffer is is, is the management of the buffer that mm-hmm. that existence of this small buffer is costing him time that he could have yes. been he could be doing something else. Okay, right. he could have sure. put down two or three more burners to mm-hmm. get more iron that would have paid for inserters that could have automated it. So that yep. so that sixty seconds later, this was all happening without him doing it with no buffers. Now yeah, uh, yes. I, I'm not I'm not saying that the meta would shift and we'd suddenly have inserters everywhere if if we you know played properly, but uh-huh. I think that there is room for, for sure. inserters in a lot of these speedruns where it's hand fed, right? Because you, to your point, you, you, the inserter takes care of the buffer for you, right? Mm-hmm. For the cost for the cost of what uh, two uh, two iron. Uh, the ge- uh, uh, one gear, gear, iron, iron. Uh, three, uh, four, four iron, and uh, one and a half copper. I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's a board, a board, a gear, and an iron, right? And you have, uh, and you've got your, you've got a, you've got a buffer controller, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then you, then the other thing is because of the, you know, tool assisted run, may maybe we might could, we might could just tighten the crap out of this. Oh yeah. But hand, hand fed. Um, you, the the human error taking the human er- error out of it is very valuable, right? Mm-hmm. If you can if you can avoid all these uh, all these placements and these single single drops, uh, that's where you want to be, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, anyway, th- th- that's the that's the current record. So he's so Macross has managed to the uh, the human buffer way way down, and not a, not a single inserter made. Um, but, uh, but probably, I, I guess that's the, I guess to your point, that's the study is the tool assisted run will really, would really take our, would really challenge all of our assumptions, right? Sort about of. how we would get it doing, right? Well, the problem with the tool assisted run is that they, uh, they can in one second transfer all the material from all the buffers to the correct spot and they can do that every second. So you don't need inserters. So they could be oh, that yes. inf- infinite uh, resource logistics uh, system. Yeah, I guess the tool, the tool, it's the tool itself becomes the inserter because yeah, it's so precise, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But but the the idea is there, and really what that comes down to is this dance. Uh, this speed run in particular is going to come down to that dance of 
reducing your buffers to the smallest amount while mm-hmm. while taking care of building your handcrafting stuff, placing inserters, placing power poles, um, ba- uh, basically everything there, right? It's it's you have to manage all that. And if if you are so good, if you are so fast that you can do it, you can pull ahead in that steel X speeder. And I think um, Macros is really fast. Like you look yeah. at him, he's he's fast. He's fast. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's got, uh, so if you look at his time on any percent, I don't think he's done any percent for a while, um, but uh, his his time is, let me go back to that. Uh, he's at two and a half hours, I think. Yeah, for, 228. 228, yeah. Uh, he used to be ninth place until Phoenix started uh, crashing records. Um, I have a special place in my heart for ninth place. That's where I spend most of my time. <laughs> 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 when are you going to get back into ninth? Where's uh? uh where, oh, I don't see man. you. Where's like, where where you uh, at? Yeah, hey, keep scrolling. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> keep scrolling. <laughs> gotta get yeah, you back way into down that. there. Uh, Nilos and I are way down here in the twenties. Uh, you got you got wait. Nilos. Yeah, uh, someone is, is right uh, on my heels. Where, you know, what you know, like? Where's uh, Mojo D and Colonel Will? Yeah, I don't oh, see man. them. Those are my friends. Uh, I, I could have swore I, I, I heard him talking about doing uh, Mo- speed. Uh, the Mojo has done a uh, has done a steel axe uh, run. Oh, there he is. Uh, Mojo is is down there. I did a twelve uh, twelve fifty one. I was pretty pretty stoked about that. Uh, that was on a I was on whimsy, and then that same night I think I did a thirty thirty three or thirty five. I don't even remember uh, getting on track like a pro. I was at least gonna—I was gonna try and get up to like a thirty and get get a little closer to uh, Macross, mm-hmm. but uh, Kobai and and everybody there they're they're, uh, they're up in the in the the top ranks. But yeah, I guess I guess that's the thing is is that uh, speed runs are about uh, are are really a skill in controlling uh, in managing buffers uh, mm-hmm. such that you do need them. Um, uh, at some point, if you have a big need that is a big need is that is about to bump based on a technology unlock, so then you do need to start them in the beginning. But inevitably, it's a cost uh, yeah, it's that a you're willing to pay cost. later for time. Right? Uh, you eventually have to ca- you eventually you start paying paying that that sort of uh, that cost of inventory for uh, for speed at some point. Right? Mm-hmm. This game, um, this game is fascinating that you can explore so much into such a basic concept like buffering, yep. and it not just, not not that all of ours. Uh, it, it's so so. The fact is, you I mean you, if you're listening to this uh, and you're saying these guys talk a lot about speed running, yeah, uh, we, we're both speed runners. R- Rain is uh, is way uh, way way better of a speed runner than I am, but that's the thing is that. Is that speed running really illustrates um, the 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 cost of a buffer and mm-hmm. as well as the benefits of a buffer mm-hmm. um, uh, more so than say like just casual play or a mega base or something mega base you won't really see the benefits of a buffer until you see that nice production that nice steady production line but that may be a week worth of game time until you get to that level where you're you've got trains that are dropping off science. Like mm-hmm. that, that does take a while. A speed run, you will see the benefit within the hour. <laughs> you, like you will see the benefit of a of a um, of a buffer uh, within maybe thirty minutes later, uh, or you will see the fact that you I should have buffered something. Now my machine my machines are shut down. I have twelve I have twelve assemblies here, and only two of them are running. Mm-hmm. I'm screwed because mm-hmm. uh, I should have buffered X, Y, or Z. Right? Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, that late game it, becomes buffers, uh, buffer management and, and sort of like your design style, like yep. balancing buffers or or figuring out how to load them or unload them quickly. I mean, there's probably 400 red posts about people unloading or loading a train faster than the other person. Right. Buffer uh, loads, yeah. like people unloading faster or, um, you know, how many blue belts can you get out of a, you know, out of out of a train buffer? There's there's yep. a lot of fascinating things to explore in there. We don't have enough time tonight for that, but yeah, it could be another so day next, topic. Next time, a couple other topics we'll have. We want to unpack. One of them is uh, one of them is a, a good one. Is how to mall best. That was another one that came up. The other one is <laughs> strategies for multiplayer. What do you do with that? 
A um, couple other ones are um, uh, did did uh, did Factorio change your life uh, outside of the game or Absolutely. not? Absolutely. Oh yeah. Uh, things like that. Um, thinking about uh, we might even break down some speed running records and and maybe unpack some speed running history for you because uh, <laughs> it's really interesting because as speed running speed running changed the game. For the non-speed runners as well, uh, the the evolutions and the uh, the innovations made there, and the thoughts to push things bigger, uh, more faster, bigger, faster, stronger, all that sort of stuff, did does kind of change the meta for the casual player and the mega basers and many of the blueprints that we use today because of those innovations. So mm-hmm. it, even if you're not a speed runner, it's still interesting to kind of unpack that and understand how it does influence uh, influence the game even for the casual player so it's it's not like uh, it's not like Mario right where you know or, or the speedrunner speed run games like uh, half-life where uh, that's gonna change too much for the casual player but uh, factorio is a super super unique game for uh, uh, super u- unique game this genre is really largely untouched and in that regard, Factorio is uh, pulls on a pulls a lot of uh, uh, a, a lot of different aspects of of you know speedrunning meta. Lots of different mm-hmm. things you can unpack, right? Yep, uh, speedrunning meta definitely changed the way malls look for mm-hmm. a lot of players. Even non speedrunners will they'll yes. oftentimes use what uh, what the speedrunners do, which is the the standard green circuit uh, iron yep. plate gear. Um, Yep, a little two, uh, just a little two belt thing, and then you pull off of that for all all the base all the base things out of the mall. Most of them use that, plus some steel, and you can get just about everything you need oh, in yeah. uh, early mall. game. It complicates yep. everything. Yep. All right, so Rain, what do you got coming up? Uh, coming up this week. All right, we'll be streaming on. This is Tuesday. Today's Today's Thursday. Wednesday. Today's Thursday. Today's Thursday. We'll be streaming yeah. on Saturday. I'll be doing some Braver New C Block. So that's Brave awesome. New World combined with C Block. Bob's and Angels. We're just getting into trains. Second half of the run. It's a blast. Uh, 105 hours in. Probably another 105 hours to go. Really gearing up for doing another run. Mm-hmm. Making a lot of blueprints, that kind of stuff. So it should be a great time. What are you up to? Uh, I am. Uh, I am back. So I, I did a vacation for the first time in uh, in five years. I took a week off of streaming, and it was. It was really cool. So I am back now, and I'm going to be doing streaming all the way up until launch day, which is eight days away. Mm-hmm. Um, and and then even up till launch day, I'm going to be off for a week uh, of my other job. So I'm going to be uh, sitting right here and uh, and streaming my uh, my butt off. Um, and we're going to play a, a ton of Factorio. I, I will dip into a couple other games to keep it fresh, but. Mostly, we're gonna. It's just gonna be all Factorio all day. I'm gonna mix in some speed runs. Right now, I've got a Bob's uh, community map going on. It's just Bob's. I've actually added in a couple of quality of life like Squeak Through and yeah, Afraid classics. of the Dark. Uh, Afraid of the Dark for the viewer experience, because so it doesn't get so dark. It's just I don't know. It's well, just I should better. add that to mine. Uh, it, yeah, Afraid of the Dark just helps the it if doesn't it helps you okay, but more it's for the viewer, if, yeah. especially if you're a streamer. Yeah, well, um, I, I don't have night vision because I don't have a body in my game. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. So that, that is, uh, that's I a big takeaway. Yeah. So it gets <laughs> yeah, real right. dark. Uh, yeah, Shred that's guy, right. Shred guy yes. stops by and he just rails me for it. He's like, where oh, are really? your Shred, lights? Shred no, guy I, does? He no, loves okay. lights. Okay. So uh, I was going to say, man, I, I, miss, I miss my my Shred guy, buddy. But yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of factorial. I, I will mix in some speed runs this this coming week and in uh, in the week just just because I need to stay in practice. I'm I'm not expecting to break any world records. In fact, I do need to study up on what Phoenix is doing that makes him so fast and and figure that out. So, by the way, if you want to start speed running, just do it. My recommendation for you is to is to do get it get that eight hour achievement. Only one point four percent of Steam Steam uh, players have gotten that. Uh, uh, the um, uh, what's the spoon. name of this? Uh, no there is no spoon, right? Uh, there is no spoon achievement. Uh, if you can get that and you can do that, then you're ready. Uh, ready. do this, do the spoon one, uh, even if you take seven hours and 50 minutes, get that done and then start submitting your speed run and come tell me about it. We'll do it together. 
Um, uh, and then uh, uh, this episode will be up on my YouTube channel. It'll also be available on Spotify, etc. And uh, it'll be there for audio if you just want to listen on. So, uh, so anyway, all right, with that, uh, last parting words before, we, before I sign us off. Hmm? Hope to lose you. No, good luck. Godspeed. Okay. All right. Don't all right. buffer too many circuits. Don't buffer. <laughs> don't uh, yeah, buffer. No, do buffer. Buffer, uh, buff, buffer what you need. Think about what you're buffering and uh, and and uh, make sure it's for a specific purpose. All right. Yeah. And if, if you have any questions, feel free to drop by, uh, leave a comment, um, check us out, uh, Twitch TV. Look for Clown Town Zeros, uh, Rain Nine Four Four One. We're mm-hmm. always happy to help talk about anything. Be yep. Great. And all the links to our to our live channels are down in the description below. So thank you very much for being here, and we'll uh, we'll see you next time.